story time again, Jack Wagons. So shut your fucking word hole and breathe through your goddamn nose. When the summer came, we needed to find a new place to live. And we had nowhere to go at all. We couldn't find a place to live with our dogs. Nowhere rented to people with pets. It's, it's like everyone in that town has pets, but no one wants to rent to someone with pets. So it ended up we uh, had we were going to be homeless. We didn't know what to do. So, so we decided, you know, we'd heard people who lived on Howelson Hill, the ski area. Because in the summer, it's not a ski area, and it's just a beautiful mountainside. It had very few mountain biking trails at that point. And um, we all planned on just living in tents and, you know, keep on house searching. And that was what we were going to do. So we moved on to the hill. And phew, best place I ever lived. I mean, it was awesome. You're just waking up in the sunshine in the woods with, like, the birds and wildflowers and you know all this stuff everywhere that you know it being one of the first places I moved to outside of you know my parents' home it was just a, a very unique contrast you know just living outside and you know, having campfires every night waking up to like songbirds or during this wonderful summer we uh, we took a road trip me and the guy Nelson from Iowa. We decided to take a vacation to go to Big Sur to go hang out on the beach and kick it with the redwoods and drink whiskey and uh, it was great man but you know by the time we got to the coast we were basically broke I mean broke and I was a little worried but you know my buddy was like don't worry about it we got this it's road dog school Just remember but we're making our way back from the coast and uh we wind up at this one gas station, big gas station hub, rest stop type thing, and uh, my friend Nelson kind of ran around and was to see if there's another way. Like he was, he he was down for begging, and I don't do that. Like he ran into these three kids, and they needed to get to the Rainbow Gathering in Pennsylvania, to get back to Colorado from the coast, and uh, so he brings these three kids, and. Uh, three kids uh, two dudes one girl uh, one kid said his name was Hobbs the girl said her name was Sky Diamond and the third kid said his name was Shaggy now Hobbs and Sky Diamond definitely look like rainbow hippies kind of dirty patchwork uh, hemp necklaces and jewelry and just you know hippie shit and then this other kid Shaggy looked like I don't know, yeah, that he was he was definitely younger and he had a crew cut. Like, you know, his hair was cut close to his scalp and it was just a white t-shirt and jeans. They get into the car and we're off. It's like, sweet, we're gonna make it home awesome. And like right off the bat, this kid Hobbs starts trying to give me like a rainbow sermon about, oh, the rainbow gathering, it's the greatest place ever. And oh, everyone loves each other and they share food and you share hearth and home and it's so brotherly. And it's like, yeah, whatever kid, we're going to fucking Colorado. We're not going any further. I'm not going to the Rainbow Gathering. I know there's a place you can camp out there that we've been living called Allison Hill. You can live there for free while you're figuring out how you're gonna get out of town and get to the, to the Nationals, the Rainbow Gathering. The, the ride home was fairly uneventful, you know, we, we stopped in one podunk town and uh, there's a bunch of kids kind of saw us at the gas station and thought we looked interesting. So like they invited us into their like, they had like a hangout in this warehouse. They wanted us to come, we told them some stories, you know, that kid Hobbs tried to like <laughs> turn them off into rainbow children. <laughs> it just didn't happen. But uh, it was funny because one of the, the kid who owned the warehouse or whose dad in the warehouse more rather, uh, the dad showed up at some point unexpectedly and like everyone kind of ran out of the warehouse and hid in the back. It's funny because that kid Shaggy like with the short hair like took off, like he fucking took off. Like, it, you know, it was like, oh, oh, oh no, dad's here, everyone get outside, get outside, go, 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 you know. But, uh, but that one kid just ran like, oh no, he ran me along, <laughs> took a while to get back to where Shaggy you know? We leave them, um, you know, we keep on going to Colorado. We get there, it was fine. We basically parted ways with the with the hippies and, uh, and, and Shaggy. The two hippies, Sky Diamond and Hobbs, they uh, they managed to get out of town in like two or three weeks. They bought a van and, you know, fixed it up and they left town. But they left that kid, 
Shaggy. And like towards the end, I you know I saw him before they left. They're like, yeah, we don't hang out with Shaggy anymore. I don't know that kid's weird. I was like, oh yeah, whatever. I didn't really care. I didn't hang out with any of them. So you know, it was just kind of small talk, passing by. You know, say goodbye to him, whatever. No big deal. So a little bit more time passes, and uh, at this point, I was I was working at this bar called the Cellar Lounge. And uh, I was working the door and, uh, you know, checking IDs and stuff for people coming in. And um, for some reason, uh, that kid Shaggy came down with like some kids even younger than him. He looked young, like, you know, 17 or 16. He came with some kids younger than him, like came down, so it was, you know, a downstairs bar. I see him coming downstairs with these two younger kids and he's like, we come in? I'm like, no, dude. He's like, well, I just wanted to show these, these youngsters some real music. Like, no, dude, you're to get the fuck out of here. You're underage. Like, go, go, you know, get out of here. I didn't like, really, didn't really register, you know. As, as they, they turned around to go up the stairs, this kid Shaggy put his hand on the small of both of these boys' backs as he walked up. And those kids were like maybe, you know, 12, 13, 14. And it didn't even read, it didn't click, you know, it really didn't. I didn't think anything of it. And uh, that was the last I'd seen or, uh, or heard of him other than uh, one of our friends had given him a ride out of town. He hitchhiked out of town shortly thereafter, and uh, that was that. Well, like, here's where it gets hairy, and I figure out, you know, the whole point of the story and the title and everything. Uh, you know, me and my buddy Ryan, the other kid who I met that first day when I moved on to Howlson Hill, had, uh, we'd been up late that night playing music and getting drunk. And, the Rock and Roll Jam session was terrific. We had a thing down at a couple clubs there, you know, that we could we could play, and it was fun. You know, we, we were the only two who uh, made it back to the hill that night, so we, you know, got in our tents, went to sleep, no big deal. Well, you know, it gets to be morning time, and I, I hear my dog, and this dog, a 60-pound uh, Korean chow, they're called Jindos. His name was Oscar. Well, Oscar's running around the camp in a circle, like, just barking and raising a fuss. And uh, my dog didn't bark at nothing. He wasn't that. He wasn't a barker. You know, it was only when something's going on. He certainly didn't run around the campsite. You know, raising hell. And you know, it was like he was. It was a very alarm bark. Like he was very worried. And you know, and I'm, and I'm hearing like noises in the brush, like in the forest around us, like kind of crackling. And you know, someone's someone's around our campsite. You know, it's like what's going on. So I pop my head out. And I pop my head out, and uh, I see. <laughs> Like, our whole campsite's being surrounded by about, like, five or six guys all decked out in camo gear and hunting gear. They all have, like, you know, a couple of them have, like, automatic assault, assault rifles. The ones that got, like, a shotgun with the shells on top for quick loading and, you know, with, That's like, ridiculous. And, I mean, they are just locked and stocked and loaded, ready to, like, and, you know, like, hands up. And I'm, I'm in my boxer shorts, like, with a, with a rotten, stinking hangover in the summer heat. I'm just, like... Uh, like I didn't know what they were there for. I'm like, we'll move. Like I was thinking maybe, you know, for trespassing and camping on Allison Hill when we weren't supposed to. Maybe they're finally kicking us off or something. I don't know. Like, why are these people here with guns? And then Ryan, he's in the tent. He doesn't know what's going on. I just hear him start grumbling. Like, what the, what the fuck? Shut up! What are you doing out there? Shut! Go away! You know, just being a dick. I'm like Ryan, man. You need to pop your head out. This is uh, this is important. Like, you need to take a look, man. Like, knock it off. And he kind of pokes his head out. He's in his boxer shorts too. And he's just kind of like, oh shit. You know, he gets his hands up in the air. They're like, these guys are like, hey, are, are you are you such and such? I'm like, what? They're like, no, I'm not. They're like, do you know such and such? They gave some name. I'm like, no. What are you talking about? They're like, well, there's this kid, and he he's a pedophile. He's in a, he's escaped from a mental institution in Utah. And he's been in town and he was here and he, you know, he tried to, you know, he tried to molest some kid on the train tracks and, you know, we're looking for him and we heard he was camping out up here. And I was like, oh, <laughs> you mean, you mean Shaggy? <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I know who you're talking about. He's like, what? Like, we, uh, we brought him from Utah, actually. He was hitchhiking with a couple of rainbow kids and uh, one of our friends gave him a ride out of town like a couple of days ago from what I heard. He's a, a pedophile? Like, what? Like, yes, he is a violent offender. He's been institutionalized since he was very young. Like, this is bad. Where, you know, it was just some concerned citizens, honestly. It wasn't even the cops. It was just concerned citizens that were or you know, round this kid up and ship him back to wherever the hell he came from. <laughs> so it's like, you know, we're, we're, we're at gunpoint, you know, being held up in the mountains. Like, 
hungover in the sun, you know, not understanding what is going on. And, you know, sure enough, the next day there's a big, you know, article in the paper. There's a pedophile in the steamboat, you, you know, reports said he was living on Allison Hill. And it was like, yeah, and, and me and my idiot friends freaking picked him up, hitchhiking and brought him to town. And then some of our other idiot friends gave a ride back out of town. So, uh, that's my story of how I accidentally brought a pedophile to the Allison Hill. And it I can dig when my bedtime jammies are smooth. Like a jazz tune played by a jazz cat in a jazz ass motherfucking club. That's insane. Ain't that some shit? Surprise, bitches.